Let us take a look at some spatial sorting algorithms. Previously, when we are talking about insertion sort, shell sort, merge sort, heap sort, quick sort, all of those can sort whatever elements that has an order among them. So basically, they try to compare with each other and then we'll be able to generate the results. Today, in this video, what we want to discuss is some spatial sorting algorithms that under certain condition, the sorting algorithm will be able to actually achieve big O of n, which is even better than n log n that can achieve from merge sort, heap sort, and quick sort. So how is that possible? First of all, you need to understand big O of n indicating that you scan through uh, the data probably once, twice, three times, several times, but it's not going to be a log n amount of times. In counting sort, basically you scan through all the elements once and you get it sorted. So you need to know this kind of, kind of magical. And the, bet, the better part is that the coding is even easier. Let's take a look of how do we uh, make that possible. So counting sort. Counting sort assumes that each of the n input element is an integer in the range from 0 to k. So here it has an additional uh, parameter here. This counting sort, it considers the number of inputs that every sorting algorithm needs to look into. However, counting sort requires you to have the pre-knowledge before you sort it, you need to know the number is from zero to certain amount of range so that there is a range over there. So what is this range for? What counting sort try to do is this. First of all, it sorts the keys with value over range zero to k, and then it count number of occurrences for each key. And basically, based on that, the sorting algorithm is done. How is that possible? Let's take a look of the example directly. Saying that this is the original sequence, I have only like uh, five elements that need to be sorted, which is very simple. And I know that the range of the elements is coming from index of uh, zero until the maximum number is eight. So what I would do is that I'm going to create an array that has the minimum value and the maximum value that forms the range of our array. So when that's happening, call, call this array, additional array is array. Whenever I look into the value of the original list, saying that array, and then I will put this value into the index of array, array seven, it will increase that value by one. So originally, of course, all the arrays were initiated with a value of zero. And then array of two, I will make say array of two plus plus, array i plus plus. So array of two plus plus, array eight would be plus plus, array five would do the plus plus, array four would do the plus plus. So you can see that I use one loop to go through every single item over here. And whenever that value indicates, I go to the other additional array that I created and make that value increment by one. So when this n elements has been go through, the next thing I need to do is go through this array, the additional array I created one more time. So what I would do over here is coming here, there's zero, 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 one. 1, 2, so there's a 2 over there, and therefore I can output or I can do whatever it is to uh, generate the results. The first element is 2, there's no 3, there's 1, 4, so the next one is 4, the next one is 5, the next one is 7, the next one is 8. So you can see that I just need to go through the additional array I created. The range would be from 0 to the maximum value of the original sequence. I go through that one more time and I'm able to generate the sorted elements already. So this is the uh, amazing part of the counting sort. Of course, this algorithm will require, if we look into the big O notations, what it will do is big O of n plus k, k indicating the range of the input data. So I need to go through this array once, that's corresponding to n, 
and then I need to go through this additional rate I created, which is k, so n plus k. When n is much greater than k, then we will have a close to big O of notation n operation. So that's actually super simple. And um, this is some interesting algorithms I want to uh, discuss. And of course, this would only work for, uh, say, integers. Uh, it's possible to do some decimal numbers, but you need to have a fixed amount of decimal numbers in the back. Uh, if you are looking for flexible uh, decimal points, then there won't, you won't be able to create an array that looks like this. And therefore, there are some limitations. And this is not comparison-based algorithm, but it is using an array-based <laughs> algorithm that is pretty interesting. So this is what we call the counting sort. As I mentioned, it's super easy. Uh, writing the code is also very easy. Uh, it's part of the selections in your final project. The last sorting algorithm we want to discuss is called the radix sort. This radix sort has only one page to look into. So let's take a look at what's happening over here. For radix sort, you can see that this is, is the original sequence that we see over here. What this is trying to do is that, first of all, it will sort through the least significant digit. And therefore, it's, what it's trying to say is that I need to sort 3, sort 2, sort 4, 3, 2, 2, 2, 1. So whenever I try to sort that, if there is a tie, I would need to use the original order that I have seen. So you can see that when the beginning of the sequence, the smallest one is 1, so I will put a 1 over here. Then the value is 2, so I will have 192 in here, 152 in here, 752 in here, 552 over here, 623, and then 253, and 144, so that I will sort the third digit. Once that is done, I'm going to use the results over here, try to sort the second digit. Again, if there is a tie, I will need to follow the order that I have received over here. And therefore, what I'm going to do next one is look into all the elements that I have over here. The smallest one is the value of the 2, which is 623. So I will have 623 and then goes to the value of 3, 231, 144, 152, etc. So you can see that there is a tie of the 5, 152. This 5, 152 occurs earlier. 752 is here, 552 is here, 253 is here. So you can see that although they are all fives in their second digit, I will follow the order I received earlier. And finally, since I have three digits, all the numbers I have are three digits over here, I need to do that three times. If I have the numbers of four digits, I need to do four times. Even if there is only one number has four digits and everything else is three digits, then I still need to do four times. And of course, uh, if we treat everything in as the four digit, 231 can be considered as 0, 2, 3, 1. And that's how we will be able to deal with it if we don't have the same amount of digits. Finally, you can see that when we sort on the first digit, there are several ones over here. I will just follow the one, one, and one according to the order. The, the order has been maintained through the previous digit sorting already, and so that we will be able to retrieve the sorted segments by going through the sequence or the data that we have for three times since we have dealing with three digits. There's one last question over here regarding to, so how, how do we sort those single digit elements? The truth is, you just learned it. Since there is only one digit, since there is only one digit, the range has to be between zero to nine so that the counting sort is actually the most efficient one to, to help in the radix sort. And that is how we would be able to uh, go through all possible sorting algorithms, uh, including the two special sorting algorithms here. So finally, we see a page of the comparisons. When we try to uh, look into different sorting algorithms, we discussed about the insertion sort. Uh, we did not talk about bubble sort. We look into shell sort, hip sort, quick sort, merge sort. All of these three things, you can see the hip sort, quick sort, 
and merge sort. All of those are n log n over here uh, on the average case scenario. Insertion sort and bubble sort are n square. Shell sort uh, does not have an average case scenario to be discussed over here because it's hard to do the analysis. Counting sort, radix sort, and the bucket sort. A bucket sort is something very similar to counting sort, uh, so that those are the special sorting algorithms with big O of n operations. Uh, there are some worst case scenarios, as we discussed. For the quick sort, the worst case scenario can be n squared compared with hip sort and merge sort, both of them. Even the worst case scenarios are n log n. However, quick source worst case scenario can be avoided if we use median of the three to choose that as the pivot. Why quick source is always or the most frequent choices uh, uh, in sorting algorithm in the standard library? This mark says it all. The in-place sorting algorithm, you can see there's not many of those. Insertion sort and quick sort are the two sorting algorithms we discussed. In place sorting algorithm indicating that if your data is stored in a size of an array, you don't need additional space to do the sorting. Remember, the quick sort will choose the first element as the pivot, and then we will find the right place. Everything still stays in the original array. Unlike heap sort, merge sort, they need additional space to store those information. That's why quick sort is always considered as like default sorting algorithm, even though it's not very easy to understand. <clears throat> Finally, the last column is called a stable sorting algorithm. So what is a stable sorting algorithm? This is mentioned when the elements that you have have duplications. So saying that in a sorted uh, in, in a input data set, you have two tens. So the first ten is in the beginning, the second ten is in the, in the end. After the sorting, of course, ten and ten will be sorted right next to each other. However, the first sort the first ten would be the first one or the beginning one, and the second ten would be the last one. That's indicating it is a stable sorting algorithm, which means that they keep the re relative order uh, in the sorting algorithm. So that merge sort will keep that property. However, quick sort, heap sort, shell sort won't because they would make values jumping around. So um, that's what all of the sorting algorithms we discussed in here uh, summarized in the table talking about what is the in-place sorting algorithm and what is the stable sorting algorithm.